Yolo composing gloves here and today we're going to be making a beat with Michael's harp. Just as a reminder there is a giveaway going on this week. If you would like to enter please see the other video about Michael's harp and it tells you how to enter and what not. So that will be good stuff. Here is a preview. There's no mixing whatsoever, not mixed, but here is the preview. This is where we are going to stop. Here you go. All right, now that you've heard the preview, I'd like to sort of pull a trick with Michael's harp. Not really a trick, but just sort of a, a particular processing chain that I think sounds pretty cool. First, I'm, I'm going to turn off DI just because uh, I'm not going to need it for what I want to do. Next, we need to come up with a cool sort of a line for the harp to play. So let's, um, harps are good at sort of fast up and down, you know that up and down sort of things. I'm going to turn this uh, up because it is way too soft. I use this volume knob for static changes and also uh, automations. My faders are my real static changes, but I use that one because it's just an extra one tucked away in the back. It's, it's really nice for stuff like that. Okay, so let's go ahead. Let's just change this name to a harp and let's make it, I don't know, pink. And let's go with a chord progression, something like, uh, let's start at, at C, and we'll just do this quick run up. Maybe we'll do these things that end uh, as a an, as a sort of an idea. They'll run up and end on the second, the end of beat one. Maybe that could be cool. Ooh, maybe bring it down to 110. And then we'll do like a little a little phrase like yeah. And then we will do another one. So this was a C minor. Um, let's go ahead. Let's name these. Was it Alt T? Yeah. We'll call this C minor. And then over here we'll go to uh, E flat major. And we will toss down an E flat. How, how far did it go? I went to the seven and then I added three notes. Okay, so let's go to, now we could do an inversion. That could be kind of cool. Oh, the B flat. Still end on G. Oh, 
Okay, uh, that's our E flat. We'll go to A flat. It's sort of a natural place to go next. That'll be A flat major. And we will, let's see. That could be pretty cool. Yeah, we'll start on the root. What the heck? Mmm. Mmm. We'll see. We'll see about that. So we got our four and our three. Our three is pretty dang high, though. Uh, let's bring this down an octave. It's more like it. Yeah, yeah that's nice. All right, cool. We'll stick with it. We haven't even touched velocities yet. Like, holy cow. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Ba -ba -bum -bum. Uh -huh. And then, of course, we'll cap it off here with a five chord. What the heck? So we'll go G. And it really should be G major. But we may or may not stick with that. So let's uh, see here. We will toss down a G. That'll be our lowest... The lowest one kind of makes sense. We have this stepwise progression. That's kind of nice. Uh, whoops, we want a D. An F. This is where the majorness would come in. One, two, th one, two, three. <gasps> I have room for another note. Uh, what do I want to add in here? G, B, D, G. Yeah, what the heck. And then this, uh, because we pushed this down, it would make sense to go down one more. Okay, so maybe we'll stick with that. We'll go under, and then we'll pop back up. Yeah, okay, so we'll stick that in there. All right, now let's send the harp to channel, to the channel with you. And let's add a vinyl strip. I have a video about this as well if you're interested. It just makes stuff sound old. I'm going to get rid of the dust. I'm going to turn the uh, the dust and the noise. Record age, we're going to make a vintage -y. It's not really going to do much for this particular sound, but we also have a compressor, some verb. I'm going to bring the amount up on the verb. I like that. And let's turn the wow up. This is going to do stuff. I'm just going to get an older sort of vibe. Let's bring the tilt. Let's try tilting the other way. Now, it would be interesting to turn the drive up just to see what it has to offer. Usually, this won't work out, but I don't know. We could get a certain aesthetic with it. If you want, like, a, a really aggressive sort of a vibe, I'm going to leave that off for now. Uh, the wow isn't doing as much as I thought it would. We, got, we just got to push the wow all the way because I, I sort of want that kind of a vibe. So we're going to have this da na 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 And then here for this, so this is our second phrase now. Does it go this low? Holy snappers. Now here, I we need some sort of a riff. I'm picturing some riff raff here. Something like that. And so we're just going to take advantage. Uh, I'm going to take advantage of this rhythm as a sort of idea and adjust it to fit the notes we want. And it'll act a little bit more consistently here as a loop for us, which is kind of what I'm aiming for. 
it'll progress down with us. Also, I really like the the wow is doing for us here. Get rid of those. Take this. Move it over. Blah 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 blah. Beep boop pop pop. Da 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 pop. Da da pop. Up. Oh, look at this. We hit the leading tone right there, too. Beautiful. And let's hear that. <laughs> yeah, man. <laughs> okay, so we should save it. I've already given a couple goes. I've been calling them harp things. This will be harp thing three. All right. So maybe one day you'll get to see harp thing uh, one and two. But now that we have our thing here, let's go ahead and toss the drums on this. For the drums, I'm going to call up an instance of battery. And let's just dig around some kicks here. So kicks, some kits. Let's see here. What's this kit sound like? Kind of like that. Let's check out a different one. No, let's go for rushing. No. Samson. Saturn. Hmm, kind of digging it a little bit tighter of a sound. I always click around, even though I know it's the same note for the kick every time. I don't know why this is our alternate kick. I find putting the hi-hats down to be pretty helpful as just a reference point. I don't know why. I just I just find that to be a thing that helps me out. Do we want to do like a fast rhythm? We'll put one of those there. If you only want to adjust the one velocity in your Right here, it's the only note, so it doesn't matter. But you can just select the note, and then you'll only affect the velocities of the notes you have selected. I do it mostly out of habit, because you, you'll regret when you accidentally change it, when you didn't mean to change it. We'll do, like, a, a small kick here. Let me just... Okay, the uh, snare, maybe? Let's bring the tempo down even further. And on here, I'm going to bring the swing up. Now, the harp's getting screwed up, but it's okay because in here, we can take the swing off of things independently. So just take the swing off right there. Now, it's essentially, it's easier to do that and just change the setting globally because otherwise the swing in here won't have an effect. So we need, we need to have that on. Okay, so let's keep on going here. Let's uh, finish out our drum sum. Let's keep this and look at some interesting ways. We could definitely alter up the hi-hats a bit. What else do we have in here? That's kind of nice. We toss that in right there, make that soft. This is a pan differently. That's interesting. Let's bring it down. a little bit louder than the others. Here, we'll make that one like extra loud. It's the end of our phrase. And we'll give it uh, a bit more hi-hat action right here. Just because it's the last, it's the last part. Okay, okay, okay. 
Uh, I am picturing another harp. Another harp is coming into my view. And <laughs> if you could freaking spell harp. And what I'm picturing on this one is let's do something sort of uh, fancy with this. Let's add delays across these. So we'll put a delay here and a delay here. And we will bring the release up and the attack up. So we're going to get sort of this echoed, delayed kind of a thing and the different various voices. And we could make some long notes here. And we know our chords. And let's just outline those. A flat major, A flat, G sharp here. You know, they said a while ago they were going to add flats. And it just never happened. My soul is sad. Okay, so I'm going to use an arpeggiator. So this F, while cool, we should really make it a G. I don't want the G. Yeah, let's go with that G. Because a three-note pattern will be more consistent. It'll make more sense. Okay, so let's come in here. FL has the MIDI effects built into the wrapper. So we will audition this. And we'll go up. Keep the gate down. Now these are all, whoops, the same. Let's bring it up. It's pretty cool. Pretty cool idea. Let's go up to. Oh man, I really like it as an idea. Let's um it's just I don't know if it's gonna meld well with the other things we have going on. Let's turn it up some too. We could change the width of these. Let's make it let's just make these progressively wider. So it sounds like it's a do -do -do -do, and the sound's changing too. Wow, we're getting so fancy. Okay. All right, so I'm thinking this would be really cool as a B part. So like after we've gone through here, we definitely need like some sort of a lead to go with our drums. And right here, let's add some uh, bass in right there. So for the bass, I'm gonna go for the Rickenbacker bass. I think it's just gonna work out really well with this kind of a sound. And so let's just wait for that to load up. We'll go for the Rick, just type in Rick, and then go for the Bacher. I like the palm muted version. And it's always fun to just sort of mess around with some of the presets they have in here. Let it load though. For some reason, it doesn't let you see that. You see that? It just moved, yeah. You might have not seen that. I might be sitting over it or whatever. You ready? Nope. How about now? I used to have a lot of contact problems, but they've mostly disappeared. Oh my gosh, it just crashed on me. What the heck, man? So I'm pretty sure you have to wait for that white bar to move all the way across before you can do any operation safely. You could probably go into the engine itself and change it. I'm just going to play by whatever rules it decides to lay down. Uh, let's go ahead and check this out now. Okay, cool. Whatever. Let's uh, come in here. We'll lay this down. This is our base. Control S. Oh, yeah, because we're in the backup. Whatever. I'll, I'll save it over the harp thing three. Boom, 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 boom. Don't forget we have swing on this. Also, all right, so I have my little riff here at the beginning. Gonna sort of run and take this for everything that it's worth. Let's check it out. All right, so I went ahead, filled it out. Now, I talk about this in other videos, but we can still see the same sort of idea. Two short notes, two long notes, and a motif is a rhythm with a contour. So there's, I sort of, I have one half of it. I've got a rhythm. I don't really have a consistent contour, but I'm not that worried because it sounds cool. So here's what it is. Yeah, that's nice. 
you know? Um, I'm going to go ahead and mess around with some velocities, see if I think they're going to make that much of a difference, and then we'll move on. All right, so I've got my velocities adjusted. It ended up sounding like this. I am now hearing some keys. I think some keys would sound really nice on top of this. So let's load up some keys. Control S because of what happened with contact earlier. For keys, I am picturing either the grander or the giant. Both of those come with complete, by the way. Uh, I'm gonna go with the giant this go around. And they have in here some snapshots. One of them is called Dreamland. So the snapshots are pretty cool. If you've never checked them out, definitely worth checking out. Basically, presets. Let's go for a different one to try out emotional. Yeah, emotional is what I'm vibing there. It's got this soft tone. That's really like the most important move. That and the verb. So let's go ahead and check this out. We're going to call this, ooh, we got to we'll give it a piano symbol. What the heck? Piano. Didn't do that on purpose. Just sort of happened. So what we've got here structurally is we've got our sound coming in. And then here I want just the, just the drums to come in. Then we'll get the bass to come in. And then we'll get some pianos to come in. And think about maybe changing some other elements. But by this time, maybe we'll go to that cool heart part that we came up with. I see a lot of people break everything out into like multiple patterns. So they have like patterns all over the place. I don't know. Sometimes I end up working like this a lot, and other times I end up like doing what they're doing and just having patterns everywhere. Just sort of depends. Because it's kind of convenient to have the ghost channels and your chords just labeled everywhere. It'd be cool if there was like global markers that would appear across all patterns. I could see, and then it'd be cool to be able to add exceptions to that, because of course there'd be times where that would be an inconvenience. But, um, you know, a man can dream. Let's go ahead and uh, let me let me vibe up a piano part here and, and let's get going. So I'm making this arpeggiation with the swing on. It sounds pretty cool. This is the sound we get. And I'm going to alter this up a bit. But anyways, that's the idea. It's this sort of longer than a short than a long. Then this should be shorter. Cool. Let's try it up an octave. So I'm using a method here where you basically just pick the closest notes to the chord and just change up the voicing. If um, you're not used to writing out parts like this, that's what a real piano player would do if they were like improvising anyways, because you move your fingers less and it tends to sound better anyways. All right. So I finished writing in the part and here's what we got. I'm thinking here is let's go ahead and also dial back these a bit and you're going to hold down the right mouse button I'm going to bring them up in these sort of waves and then I'm going to just push the volume up as needed because I really like this the tone of the softer velocities so I'm going to just do something like that now we can't hear it hardly at all but that's no problem because we have a volume slider Maybe we'll do that twice. Then we're going to come over here and here we're going to clear out that harp and we're going to replace it with another harp. Uh, so we'll go for a harp. If I could spell it right. Boom, boom, boom. And we're going to do what we did earlier. Control S because we did quite a bit there. Add some, de oh, no delay on the first one. Bunch of delay. Even more delay. With, yes, even more with. And bring our attack up a smidge that way it's just these sort of echoes of what's happening and on this one we're going to write in a three note arpeggiation like we did earlier we go for e 
Yeah. What was I going to say? C something? E, E, C, E flat, G, E flat majors, E flat, G, B flat, A flat major, G. major and of course we'll do what we did earlier come into here and do our arpeggiation going up we're not with a repeat a range of two and bring the gate down why do i feel like this sounds way different than what we did before do i need to do Sounds like too high. Let's um, add on the attack. Let's turn it up. Let's go a little less aggressive with this outside thing. Okay, now here, let's, uh, I'm thinking about, let's try out without the drums. And let's go ahead and bring these all down. On the drums, this is a unique pattern, right? Yeah, it's the only pattern for it. On the drums, let's go in and, okay, let's grab our drums back. Okay, let's keep the hi-hats in. Let's take out the snare or the clap. And then right here, to direct the attention of the listener, we will add a bell sound, bell. So let's come in here. Let's grab my favorite bell. It's in the factory library. One of the bells I use a lot anyways. Um, actually, I have a free instrument called Gloves Glock. Glock, okay. And we're going to use that instead. So we're going to come in here. Here it is. Uh, we're going to use the extended range patch. And that's not what it sounds like. We are going to go for... Yeah, actually, that, that'll work fine. And let's write in a little longer melody part. Bring this down an octave. G. Oh yeah, just gonna outline those chords. Oh, that's very beautiful, very nice. And then I'm also thinking about switching up the bass part here. That could be really cool. I wanna layer it with some more stuff. I do have other bell sounds. I don't know if I ever published it. It's kind of weird to have made instruments. Like this one you can go and get. But there's one, the music box. I think I put the music box up at some point. Because um, it's pretty done looking. Oh, you know what? This might be one you have to pay for. I might have put down for like five bucks or something. I spent a long time on the music box. Uh, because I had all these uh, ideas. Uh, so this is the music box. Another wonderful atmospheric, sort of a bell tone. I actually have the box right here. <laughs> this was a, let me see, can you see that? This was the box I, this was the box I sampled. I took, I did a bunch of things to it, including disassembling it. And really screwing with different properties of physical things to get various tones out. Uh, but one of the big differences was pencil. The pencil one has this sort of nice dull pluck to it.
But this is an articulation mixer. Something I wish more libraries had was sort of an idea I had. I was like, hey, why don't we make it so you can mix articulations together? Like, you know, if you have a violin, it'd be cool to mix the staccato in with uh, maybe another kind of, like, spiccato. Maybe to mix them, you know? That would be cool. They don't, you'd have to open up another patch and mix the libraries. To me, the whole thing seems silly. You should be able to do this. You, uh, some libraries, this would be a really great idea with. So what I'm going to do, let's try, let's, how does metal sound like? Go all pencil. Take it spaced out. Okay, let's write in a thing. Actually, let's just try copy pasting this. I'd like to alter the bass up a bit just so we get some more variation. I would do this through more of the stuff, but I can tell you right now, I'm not going to do it um, right now. And after I listen through, I'll get a better vibe if I want to or not. But let's just change up a couple of these notes to add interest. So one of the things I'm going to do is let's, uh, let's go down instead right here. So We're going to E flat. We'll build up to the E flat instead. We'll go up to the G. We'll come down. So now we have this sense of building up, so it would make sense to go up. So on e, A flat major, C is below. We could go. It looks like the next note that would really be reasonable is that note. Yeah, we go up. Okay, so this one probably was fine at a G still. You know, we'll do one of those. So we'll come back. Back to the main idea right here. Make unique. Except for this time, the baseline, we're going to have to move around a little bit to make it make sense musically. Let's see. I kind of want to go And then here, I think it would be cool to keep the bells going, so we'll copy the bell part over. Except for we're gonna, since this part is st sticks out as much as it does, we're gonna go down, so we go boom, 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 like that. This part, we're going to do a similar thing, paste, paste, but this time there'll be an octave lower. And right here. And then here, 
here, we will keep those first two notes. Everything else can die. And those down an octave, copy this, paste this. And then we'll change up this last bit here to just be this harp doing its run but we'll drag it out. <laughs> okay, should be a little bit more metered when we're this far apart. <laughs> Let's uh let's squeeze these down. Oops, off by nope, that was right. And then the harp, what the flip? It's still doing the thing. Swing is off on this. Oh, no, no. Is it just my timing is like kind of wonky? Yeah. Gotta be more accurate. All right, cool, I was about to say, my, my what's been doing what now? Make it like soft, sort of nostalgic. Yeah, dynamics, who would have guessed? Wow, so we have a whole thing here. Um, <laughs> uh, okay, well, let me give it a quick listen. I'll decide if it's too repetitious or not. Okay, so I, I was just listening to it, and my first impression, I didn't even get all, I got to like right here, I really like actually how it progresses. We need to make this stuff softer because it's the intro. So I'm just gonna really quick dial these back a bit. It's just too loud at the beginning. It's like, it doesn't make sense as a progression. It's just kind of like, whoa, this is... And this, and just sort of... Nerf them. And here, this can go away. Wow, man, I really like that music box. Um, this is the intro, though. Kind of sort of a soft thing. Let's keep going here. All right, I went through, varied up a lot of parts, added a lot of little things here and there, just a lot of like little touches. Didn't add any new sounds or anything, just varied up notes, um, added in little lines, especially with the bells, sort of integrated parts of the bells in a couple new spots. The piano line, I definitely probably want to add more variation to, but I'm just not going to at this time. Um, but I think we have a pretty nice progression. There's no mixing whatsoever, not mixed, but here is the preview. This is where we are going to stop. Here you go. Thank you. 
So that's that. If you have any questions, let me know. Subscribe and have a blessed day. Thank you.